In this video, I'm going to show you a little known method for scraping web pages in VBA. Now, the beauty of this method is that it's very simple to use and it requires very little code. So let's go ahead and get started. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. I've created a table of data here on my website for us to use as test data. And I'm going to show you a really simple way of scraping this data and writing it to a worksheet with just a few lines of code. If you want to scrape data from a web page using VBA, there are three common methods that most people use. The first is using the Internet Explorer library. Second, you can use the Chrome Selenium library. And third, we can use the Microsoft XML HTTP library. Now, Internet Explorer isn't an option anymore, as you may have heard. The Chrome Selenium library is becoming very popular. The main points to know about Selenium are we need to install the type library and we need to have the Chrome browser installed to use it. The other option is the Microsoft HTTP library, which most people don't really know about, and this doesn't require any install or browser. The main difference between these two options has to do with scripts. Some web pages, for example, e-commerce web pages, run scripts when the page loads. And if you're not using a browser, then you may not get the data you expect. In this case, Chrome Selenium is the better option. If your web pages are static, then XML HTTP library has the advantage of not requiring any installation or any browser. The problem with both of these methods though, is that if you want to scrape data from a table, it takes a lot of code. This is how we use the XML HTTP library. We open the URL and then we use the send command. Now, when we get the response text back, we store it in the inner HTML of the HTML document. So all these methods that we use, use a HTML document. And once we have that, we basically read through it to find the data we want. So if we go down to our read table here, what we do with our table is we typically create a for loop and within the for loop, we read through each row on the table. Now here I'm adding each row to a collection. We could also use an array or we could just write it straight out to the worksheet. But you can see that it takes a bit of code to read a table like this. Now the method that I'm gonna show you doesn't require all this code and it's actually much simpler to use. And this method is called the query tables method. So now we're going to write the code for using a query table to scrape data. The first thing we'll do is we'll declare our URL as a string and I'm just gonna paste the URL here. Just makes the code a bit further on a bit more readable. Now we're going to declare a query table. So each worksheet has a collection of query tables, just like it has a collection of list objects. And what we do is we use the worksheet object and then we use query tables and add. So we have to write the URL like this. We use URL and semicolon, and then we just add our URL to it. And the second parameter that we're using is simply the range where we want it to be written to. Once we've added the query table, we then specify the criteria for our query. So the first one is we're going to say the selection type and we have the option of all tables, entire page, and we're going to go with a specified table. Now next we're going to specify which table, which is table number one on the web page. And web formatting, we can set that to all none or RTF. That's just how it formats back on the spreadsheet. And then we select refresh. And that's all the code we need to scrape a full table. So let's just view our worksheet here and let's run the code and see the results. So you can see it's getting the data and now you can see it returned all the data in the table that we wanted and it's formatted as we specified. So you can see this code is very simple and in the case where we want to get back all the data in the table, it's very, very useful. One thing we should keep in mind is that if we want to create a new query table each time, we should delete any existing ones on the worksheet. If we don't delete the existing query table, then the new query table will be inserted to the left like this. Let's see how to do it. First of all, we create a simple main sub which will manage our other subs. The first thing we do here is call our clear sheet sub, which we will create shortly, and then we will call the query table sub. We'll make these subs private as they are only called from this module. We create the clear sheet sub. How we clear tables is very straightforward. We say dim table is query table, and then we add for each table in sheet.querytables. And then all we have to do is table.delete, and this code stops us having lots of query tables hanging around in memory that we are no longer using. The next thing we want to do is delete any existing data 
from previous runs. We use sheet one dot cells dot clear to do this. Now we run the code to see it working. Let's put a breakpoint here and what I'll also do is change the web formatting style to none so that the differences will be more apparent when we run the code. Now you can see a clear data from the worksheet and removed any existing query tables. And now what it does is it writes the data to the worksheet and you can see that it is not formatted as we changed the web formatting setting to none. Now I've added some extra test data to this web page so that I can demonstrate something pretty cool. So you can see that we've got an extra table and a small bit of text in between. And now let's go back and look at the code so I can explain what I'm going to do. One major stumbling block for scraping data is that we've got to learn the document object model. So this is a separate model to the Excel model and it requires a bit of time to get familiar with the different components. So we've got items here such as get elements by tag name, HTML row, table row and so on. But what if we could actually just read all the data on the web page to a spreadsheet and then we can just use the standard VBA code to read through or manipulate the data. We are going to change the web selection type to give us back all the data. Now if you ever want to see options that are available you can delete the equals and then when you add the equals again what happens is you'll see the IntelliSense shows what's available. And we're going to select the entire page. Now a second way to see all the possible options is if you click on it and select Shift F2 and then you'll see a list of all the members of the, the Excel selection type. Now if we click on the X or press Control F4 we can close this window. But that's just an easy way to see the possible options. So we're going for the entire page. Obviously we don't need to select a table. And let's run the code and see what we get back. You see with one simple change we're now able to get everything on the web page back to a spreadsheet. And that means we can use VBA code to access the data rather than having to use the document object model. If you'd like to get the code for this video you can download it from the link in the description below. If you like this video then please click on the like button and if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it.